Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman, and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month, I thought we would take a look at two things. The first is running a Plex server on an Apple Silicon powered Mac, and it's actually working much better than expected. I'll demo that in a minute. And I also want to talk a little bit about a new HDR to SDR tone mapping feature that's not fully baked just yet, but I think is going to solve a lot of problems for you Plex power users who like your 4K HDR movies. Lots to talk about here, which we're going to get to in just a second, but I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it is uploaded, and all of the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this Mac can do with Plex transcoding. Now, I got a ton of email from folks asking me to try out a Plex server on the new Apple M1 processor that's inside of this MacBook Air. Now, in the past, Macs have been somewhat decent as Plex servers because they were powered by Intel processors. And the reason why Plex likes Intel processors is because Plex makes use of Intel's QuickSync technology to very quickly decode and re-encode video. And that's something that you do through the Plex transcoding process. So if you leave your house with your phone and you want to watch a Blu-ray MKV movie that's on your server, you certainly can't stream that huge Blu-ray file to yourself. But Plex can take that file and crunch it down into something much smaller so you can fit it over the very limited pipe that your cell phone has uh, to the internet. And it works very well on an Intel chip. I didn't think it would work well here at all because, of course, this is not running with Intel. But to my surprise, check it out. It's working. And not only is it working, we have hardware transcoding going on here, too. So right now, I have two Blu-ray MKV movies playing. The first one here is The Force Awakens, the Star Wars movie. That's going to my Roku TV in the next room. And as you can see here, we're transcoding that 1080p Blu-ray file down to a 720p file running at 4 megabits per second. And that little HW there next to transcode means that it's doing it in hardware. So somehow, uh, the Plex server running on this machine thinks it's running on an Intel chip with QuickSync. That's how it's working. It's pretty crazy. And then we also decided to spin up another movie here. This is The Phantom Menace. And this is going to my iMac on its web browser. This one we're leaving at 1080p, but we're transcoding it down to 10 megabits per second. And all is working quite well. And if we scroll down our little uh, status bar here, you can see that our CPU utilization on the system here is only running about 12 or 15 percent as we're doing this transcoding. And here's the crazy part. This is not running on native uh, ARM code. This is Intel code. And if you check uh, out the Plex server here, you can see that it is in fact running as Intel software. The Plex transcoder here, we've got two sessions running. Uh, one is using a little bit more CPU than the other at the moment, but again, both are Intel processes, and all is working quite well on this little device, despite the fact that we are not running on native Intel hardware. And that was the big surprise here. And we're going to take a look now at a few other files and see what that does to the performance of the system. All right, so let's spin up this 10-bit 4K HEVC file that I shot from my trip to SpaceX last year. That was a fun video. You got to check that out. Uh, now, right now, if you look over on the left-hand side there, you can see that's currently direct playing to my iPad because the iPad here can play just about anything. But what I want to do now is apply some transcoding to this because one of the things we've discovered with our prior videos on this topic is that not all Intel processors can very efficiently uh, work with these 10-bit files. So right now, we've got it on original quality. I'm going to have this one go down to 1080p at, I don't know, 12 megabits per second. And we'll go ahead and enable that, and we'll see how long that takes and whether or not uh, we have hardware transcoding. And sure enough, if you look over on the uh, chart here, you can see that there is a transcode HW uh, next to that file as it plays back. And it really started coming back to life here pretty quickly. And if we go back now and take a look at the utilization just to see what uh, is going on with the M1 chip on here, you can see that our utilization is up a bit here, but still not significantly so. We've got plenty of headroom here to do more. 
And one thing I'm noticing with the Plex charts here is that it is not reporting what Plex is using individually. It's just giving you the entire CPU load. If we scroll back here to the uh, system utilization chart here, you can see again, we're using about 22% of the overall system resources. And we still have a good amount of memory free too. If we go into the RAM setting here, uh, you can see that we're using about eight gigs of RAM, but we still have another eight or so remaining to use. So let's do something else with this file. Again, we went from uh, 4K down to 1080p at 12 megabits per second, which is what this is running at right now. Uh, so let's switch back to our two up view here. We'll go into our playback settings and I'm going to select uh, something at 720p. So let's do 720p high at four megabits per second. I'll select that and we'll see what happens here. And there we go, we've got 720p up on the control panel and boom, we are back in business, so there you go. Now somebody on Reddit mentioned that they were having trouble with standard definition, so let's go down one more notch here. And right now we're at 720p, again HEVC 10 bit. Uh, we're gonna go to 480p at 1.5 megabits per second and let's see if that gets tripped up. And it's chewing on it, it's chewing on it. Now you'll note here though that it is not uh, putting an HW next to the encoding of that 480p video, but we're not seeing a huge hit on the CPU like I expected to see with a software encode. So it's likely here that it's doing the same translation as it's doing for the higher resolution video, but it's just not showing up as a hardware transcode on Plex, even though the M1 processor is likely accelerating the process. And by the way, we're still doing those other two transcodes over to the computer and the TV. And again, this is just really surprising just how good this works. Now I wanna take a look though at something called tone mapping, which is a brand new feature that just got implemented on Plex. I don't think it's gonna work as well, but let's give it a shot. All right, so we're playing back another file here on my iPad. This is an HDR video, 4K, HEVC, 10-bit. And it looks great on this iPad screen because again, the iPad can play back HDR video as a direct play. Now keep an eye on these balls and some of the colors that you're seeing here because this display again is HDR and it can take the file directly from Plex as you can see here and properly tone it because this device supports that. Now one thing Plex has been able to do of course is deliver HDR video in this way, just directly sending it to a device that knows what to do with it. But if you ever tried to transcode these files and we'll do that right now, we'll go down to uh, 1080p at 12 megabits per second, uh, you will note that the color changes dramatically. So if you're watching something like Star Wars, the blackness of space becomes kind of gray. And as you can see, those balls look a little different in color than they did a minute ago. And that's because the transcoder hasn't been able to do the tone mapping. And so when it processes that video, it's unable to uh, instruct the device to display it as an HDR file. So that's why the colors here look dramatically off versus what we saw before. Now it's hard to really properly demo this on a video that's not being sent out in HDR, but hopefully you can see that uh, the things here just don't look as good as they did a minute ago. It's certainly visible to me. Now one of the things that Plex has added just in its most recent update is the ability to have the transcoder do that tone mapping but right now it's not fully baked for all different versions of Plex. Let's take a look at their website and get an idea as to how this works and then we'll see how it performs on the MacBook Air. So if we take a look at the Plex website here, you can see that right now the only platform that really supports this fully is Linux. And you have to have a couple of dependencies installed here which they uh, detail out on their support page. I did try getting this going on a few different Intel-based Ubuntu systems running with the latest version of Ubuntu and I could not get this to run very efficiently. I did get it to work. It did actually tone the color properly, but it was really having a hard time keeping up with the videos that were going in. This will do a hardware process. In addition to the transcode, the uh, color grading on top of that will also go through an enhancement if you have proper hardware support. But right now, again, that hardware support for tone mapping is limited at the moment to Linux. So Windows, Mac OS, uh, other platforms, including NAS devices right now are going to be doing this through software. And in many cases, it's going to really drag things down quite a bit. Now, the way you implement this is to go into your Plex server settings 
And if you go over to Transcoder, uh, you will see an option here to enable HDR tone mapping. And when that's enabled, it will attempt to uh, map the color tones properly. So I'm just going to enable that setting and click Save. And now we're going to jump back to this video and see if it can transcode it and get that color proper on the iPad screen. All right, so we are direct playing this file right now, just like we were before. So the HDR here is properly implemented. But now we're going to go with that setting enabled to the playback settings here. And let's do a 1080p, again, 12 megabits per second. And let's see what happens. Now, you're probably going to see that CPU utilization start to really spike. And that is something you'll see across all platforms. But platforms that are hardware uh, enabled, that are hardware accelerated, uh, will do this better. And as you can see here, we're just not getting smooth playback. However, this is pretty much the same experience I had even on a more powerful Intel device as I was experimenting with Ubuntu a little bit earlier. So I suspect that once they begin optimizing the Windows version, we may actually see this do a little bit better here. I did find, though, that the color grading isn't bad. It's actually uh, mapping the colors in a way that I think look pretty close to what it looked like before. Not as good, of course, but certainly better than seeing a bunch of gray space in your Star Wars movie. And if you do have a system that can more efficiently deal with the tone mapping in real time, I think this will be a pretty good way to enjoy your 4K HDR movies when you're on the road. So all in, uh, just a, a tremendously good amount of performance out of this device. Even if it doesn't yet support tone mapping, uh, it's doing transcoding far better than I expected. And it really is a credit to Apple, both in their chip design, but also in their Rosetta emulation layer that is translating all of these Intel commands into something that the M1 chip can execute. And the fact that we've got hardware transcoding working on this is pretty remarkable. Now, this will work, of course, so long as Apple continues to support the Rosetta emulation layer. At some point, though, they will cut off Intel from their ecosystem, and there will be a version of Mac OS that will lack the emulator. We saw that with PowerPC when they transitioned to Intel about a decade ago. But I think for now, uh, we've got plenty of time here to enjoy the Intel version of the software, and hopefully Plex will uh, work on something that's optimized for the M1. Because if it's working this great in emulation, just imagine how well it would do natively. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Zybin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Jim Peter, Tom Albrecht, and Chris Allegretta. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.